Hi, this is the Science Chef. In this video, we'll be answering last year's WASC GCA Chemistry Alternative to Practicals. The next question here is question three. And question three is always to test your understanding or your knowledge of the general application of uh, chemistry, practical skills, or some classroom knowledge can also be tested here. But most times they're always practical skills, right? And this aspect most times come from preparation of gases, separating techniques, oxidizing and reducing agents, laboratory apparatus, and so on and so forth. Those are the major areas where questions all normally come from in this section of the examination. So let's look at this. Here you are asked to list two methods suitable for separating a mixture of liquids. A mixture of liquids. They didn't specify, they just said a mixture of liquids. One is separating funnel method for separating immiscible liquids. Well, the second one is what fractional distillation. Fractional distillation is used for separating miscible liquids. Then you can also use distillation to separate a mixture of what liquids if the variance in their boiling points is very wide. But I always prefer to go with fractional distillation because you can never be wrong with fractional distillation. Then Next question says, state one use of the following pieces of apparatus in the laboratory. Tongue. A tongue is used to hold or transfer hot solid objects during experiment. Example, if you were heating, um, let's say a crucible, and you want to bring down the crucible from the tripod stand that was being heated by the Bunsen burner, you don't use your hand, you use a tongue to bring it down. Then the wire gauze. The wire gauze is to allow the even spreading of the flame when heating. When you are heating, let's say, an evaporating dish during evaporation, you use the wire gauze to spread the flame all around the bottom of the dish. Because if you don't use the wire gauze, the flame will concentrate at one point of the evaporating dish, which is not too good. Right? It could lead to the easy crack of the evaporating dish if you continue heating one particular spot of the evaporating dish. Then the next is a beehive shelf. A beehive shelf used to support the gas jar or measuring cylinder during experiment. Especially experiment that has to do with preparation of gases. That thing on which the gas jar is always placed is called what? The beehive shelf. Then the spatula. The spatula is that apparatus that looks like a spoon, a two-headed spoon, right? It's used to transfer little amounts of solid during what? Experiment. Maybe you want to transfer your salt or your base, maybe from the container to, to the test tube or beaker, you use your spatula, all right? Then here you are given a table that to complete the reaction, a table that has to do with gases, solid and what? Liquid and a reaction involving solid and liquid to produce a gas, we are expected to complete the table. The first one here, uh, we are given magnesium and the gas produces hydrogen. So that which liquid will react with magnesium to produce hydrogen and that is an acid. Simple, it's only an acid that will react with magnesium to produce hydrogen gas right so it can either be dilute hydrochloric acid or dilute the trials of a six acid or dilute mm. now when it comes to trials of nitrate five acid it can be very tricky because not all metals will react with dilute trials and five acid to produce hydrogen gas because of the strong oxidizing word power but magnesium can do that will produce hydrogen gas with very dilute trials and five acid but to be on the safer side let's just be silent on trials and five acid and use only dilute hydrochloric and hydrochloric of a six acid. Then the second one here is um, we are given the liquid which is dilute hydrochloric acid and the gas produces carbon four oxide. So which solid will react with dilute acid to produce carbon four oxide? It's very simple. Is it that solid will have to be a trioxocarbonate four, right? So it can either be calcium trioxocarbonate 4, zinc trioxocarbonate 4, sodium trioxocarbonate 4, copper 2 trioxocarbonate 4, magnesium trioxocarbonate 4, as the case may be. So it has to be a, a trioxocarbonate 4. That's very straightforward. Then the third one, we are given the liquid as cold water and the solid as uh, calcium carbide. So which gas will be produced? If there's only one gas that we produce here, and that is what? Ethane. Yes, ethane is produced from the action of cold water on calcium carbide. That's CH triple bond CH and alkyne. Okay, the last question. 
then we are asked to describe one chemical test to distinguish between sodium hydroxide and sodium triazocarbonate 4. Now, the test is very easy. It's just to add an acid to these two in different test tubes. Sodium hydroxide will not give us any visible reaction, but sodium triazocarbonate 4 will produce effervescence when the acid is added, right, due to the evolution of what? Carbon 4 oxide. But remember, if you're asked to describe, you're not asked to state the observation or what happens. So that's why you need to be a bit detailed. So here, first off, you put the unknown solutions, that's sodium hydroxide and sodium triazocarbonate 4 solutions, in separate test tubes connected to lime water, exactly, chemical tests. Now, add dilute HCl to each test tube. The test tube that produces bubbles of a colorless gas that turns lime water milky contains what? Sodium trioxocarbonate 4 solution. Very easy. Then, the other one, the test tube without a visible reaction contains what? Sodium hydroxide solution. Remember, you were given two solutions to identify. So you have to speak about both of them. You don't just speak about sodium trioxocarbonate 4 and remain silent on sodium hydroxide, even though there is no reaction, no visible change with sodium hydroxide. You still need to state that there's no visible change or visible word reaction. Are we together? So that brings us to the end of our solution of um, the 2024 WASC GC chemistry practical, that alternative to practical. So if you're able to learn anything, I mean anything, no matter how small it may be from this video, kindly hit the subscribe button if you are yet to do so. And then like this video. If you have any question you want to ask, drop it in the comment section and rest assured, we will attend to it. So until I come your way next time, I remain the science chef. Thank you and stay blessed.